Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. And today, we are doing something pretty special. We're pulling behind the curtain. That's not right, right? We're pulling back the curtain. There you go. Giving you a peek behind the curtain. I'll get it right. For our Patreon That's patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday, where we do not one, but two bonus episodes each and every month. And I'm excited that we are going to be visiting one of the more interesting nights. We've had this requested a few different times. It's a, a special look at WWF superstars from January 20th. 1996. This was actually recommended to us by Patrick McGaw of Shreveport, Louisiana. I guess his claim to fame is he is, uh, married to a member of Tony's family. Now his adopted daughter, if you will, Brooke, and, uh, man, they picked this for us. We had a lot of fun watching it. And this really gives you a taste of, you know, what the Monday night wars were like before it really heated up. I mean, sure. Nitro existed, But at the time it was like the little engine that could, yes, it's live. Yes. It's up against a taped draw most of the time, but still Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, they're still with the WWF. The NWO isn't even really an idea yet. So it's pretty cool to take a look at what wrestling used to look like before. And I mean, right before the Monday night war started to get hot, it actually happened. The superstars tape that I'm talking about on January 20th, 1996 at the Stabler arena. That's right. Stabler arena, real tied in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, man, it was such an interesting time in the company. I mean, we're still a site away from there being, uh, an attitude era. Here's what I mean. We got skip and zip taking on Chaz Warrington and Glenn Ruth. They're not even the headbangers yet. Yokozuna is in there with Phil Apollo who you may or may not have seen before work enhancement matches, or even as a fake doink, we've got diesel in the main event, taking on Isaac Yankum DDS. But how about this for a fun little nugget? Hakushi. That's right. What a performer he was against a very young Jeff Hardy, who I believe back in this era, uh, Jeff Jarrett used to say that, um, for whatever reason, Scott Hall would call Jeff Hardy vanilla ice or ice for vanilla ice. We've also got the million dollar champion, Steve Austin in here. He's going to be taking on Scott Taylor, the guy who would years later do the worm as Scotty too hottie. And we've got, check this out. Psycho kid and the one, two, three kid taking on avatar, the real life house. snow and Aldo Montoya before he was just incredible. I absolutely love watching old school wrestling from 1996. And I think you will too. I'm excited for you to watch along with us. If you haven't already get your peacock ready. It's season 11 episode three. So just pull out your peacock type in WWF superstars. You want to go to season 11 episode three. That's season 11 episode three. By the way, I feel like I should say top of the morning to you. This episode is brought to you by the St. Patrick's day shamrock shavers. Manscaped this year. Don't just chase rainbows, make your own pot of gold and groom your little leprechaun with the leaders in below the kilt care. Say goodbye to your clover forest with manscapes lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust manscaped head over to manscaped.com and use the code WHW for 20% off plus free shipping. Ever since I've used manscaped, I can proudly say I found my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. We'll meet your new lucky charms just in time for St. Patrick's day, the lawnmower 5.0. This trimmer comes with two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, one for a classic trim and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It's equipped with dual led spotlights. You can navigate your shamrock patch in peace. If you're worried you'll make a mess, well, fear not. This wonder is waterproof. Shaved by the misty moors, under a waterfall, or even during a rain dance. It's got a compact case that makes it an ideal traveling companion, ready for an adventure or those last minute plans. If you're trimming the hedges in your Irish garden, man, it's not just for below the belt. You can complete the whole look with Manscaped's new signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit. They've even got the Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're sculpting your beard or cleaning up your neckline, you always have the right tools for the job. 
So why not get 20% off and free shipping with our code WHW at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code WHW at manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's day, make sure your little hairy leprechaun is luckier than ever with manscaped. This bonus episode is brought to you by my friends in Shreveport, Louisiana, Patrick McCall and his wife. Actually, I'm going to give Patrick credit for this, but his wife is my goddaughter, my adopted daughter, the one and only Brooke Bauckham. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Patrick, this is your episode. This is your moment to shine. I can tell. Uh, I'm doing great, Tony. How are you? (laughs) Yes. Brooke has given Patrick the permission to talk. So, (laughs) So, Patrick, you wanted to go back to WWE, or at that time, WWF Superstars, from 1996. Interesting choice. Tell us why you chose this for a bonus podcast. Well, this is an interesting episode because basically it happens at the beginning of 96. Every, every element of the, uh, of the uh, attitude era is there, but it's the opposite of what you came to know and love. So, uh, you've got Michael PS Hayes there, but he's, He's still just as ugly, but he's Doc Hendrick. Right. And then you have the Undertaker wearing his Phantom of the Opera mask. Right. And you have some jobber looking guy in green tights named the Taskmaster who be- the Ringmaster. became one of the be- better uh, superstars. Yeah, the Ringmaster. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, the Ringmaster. That's I'm sorry, right. Ringmaster. That's right. Yeah. So. Right. This is right before the Attitude Era, I guess maybe just a couple of years before the Attitude Era, but all the place, all the people are in place here uh, for a big run. But man, this is just like right before it. And also we are going to see some very interesting people. Like for instance, Jeff Hardy is a job guy here. Scotty too, ho- Scotty too hottie is a job guy here. This is before they became famous. So this, there's a lot of interesting things in this show really is. And it must it must have not been softball season because it starts off with a match uh, with the tag team of Sid, Justice, and One Two Three Kid. I'll right. let you guess which one did all the work in ma- that match. <laughs> yeah, and and by the way, just to let you know, Vince McMahon, Jim Ross, and Kurt Hennig are on commentary on this, and we got a couple of pretty cool promos. One from uh, from Goldust. Uh, and then of course we see diesel before he became his real name, Kevin Nash. And, uh, so it's a lot of good things, man. It's a lot of, I'm telling you, it, it is really, really a good choice. Thanks for this. We appreciate it. Uh huh. Oh, oh, you forgot the, uh, the ugly dentist guy. He became a, uh, somebody different too. Yes. He became a mayor in Knoxville. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he sure exactly. did. That's right. The ugly <laughs> dentist guy. He, yeah, he's in there as well. So all kinds of good things, uh, going on. And we really do appreciate, uh, you, uh, picking this, uh, are you sure you picked it or did Brooke pick it and gave it to you? Uh, well, I come on, own up, to it. own up to it. This is your moment, Patrick. I picked it all by myself. There you go. That's what I wanted to hear. Patrick, <laughs> you picked it all by yourself. Now, Brooke wanted to see triple H and stink from WrestleMania 31, but we had already seen that one. So this is the one we went with. So great choice. It really is. So everybody stand by. We're going to take you back to 1996. This is right before the Royal rumble of that year. Uh, and it's uh, superstars, WWF superstars, uh, back at the first part of 1996, Patrick, it's good talking to you, buddy. Lois sends her best to you and the family. Thank you, Tony. And tell Lois to keep her eye on the mail. Eye on the mail. Yeah. Okay. Usually I tell her to keep her eye on the bottle of wine, but this time I'll tell her to keep her eye on the mail. Yeah. And watch that first step too. It's a doozy. <laughs> All right. What? All right, Patrick. All right, Brooke. See you guys later. Thank you, Tony. Bye.
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the second of our two bonus episodes here on the WHW Monday Patreon. And of course, we couldn't do it without your friend and mine, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, dude? How are you? Hey, this one is, uh, <clears throat> this one's from Patrick McGall. And uh, Patrick is the husband of my goddaughter, Brooke Balcom. And, uh, Sorry, Brooke. Brooke wanted us to watch the uh, Triple H Sting match from WrestleMania 31, I believe, which we've already watched. So we defaulted and went to Patrick. And Patrick is... Lois Shivani likes Patrick. I don't know what that says about Patrick. Hmm. They were at the house here. Not this Thanksgiving, but last Thanksgiving. In we all give Patrick a lot of shit and he deserves it. And Lois kept saying, I like Patrick. You need to leave Patrick. Alone. Really? So anyway, Patrick, you're welcome. And we're going to watch superstars from 1996. How about that? It's a big time in, uh, in, in all of pro wrestling because nitro has been on the air since September and Eric Bischoff's been battling. He's been taking inside shots in this era, January of 96. He does an about face. He stops talking about it. Meanwhile, the WWF is continuing to do their billionaire Ted skits, but this is before razor Ramon and Scott hall have jumped. They're still here as or I said, razor Ramon and Scott hall, but you know what I mean? They're still yes. here as razor and diesel right. Scott hall and Kevin Nash have yet to show up on WCW. So. We've got Steve Austin here, not yet quite stone cold. It's an interesting time in the company. And at this point, Shawn Michaels has yet to win the world title. So, uh, Bret Hart's still here. This will be fun. I wasn't watching wrestling in January of 96. I got back in, in August of, or I guess it was, maybe it was July. It was either late July or early August, 1996. I'm flipping through the channels and I see Hulk Hogan standing in the ring with Vinny Vegas. And the diamond stud, I say that because I okay. sort of missed all of diesel and razor Ramon. I wasn't watching those few years. Yeah. So I just was blown away by Wait a minute. Why is, why is Hulk Hogan wearing all black, Tony? Yeah. That'll so get you back. Right. I was back in and, and I yeah. started to say, all right, well, if this is the WCW show, there used to be a show called Monday night raw. What's going on there. And before I knew it, I was all in. So I got to see uh war games was my first. That fall brawl was my first WCW pay-per-view back in, but SummerSlam in August of 96 was my first uh, show back there. And of course that was all about Shawn Michaels and Vader and Vader really makes a big splash here in January of 96. So I'm excited for us to watch this, an episode of superstars that you nor I have ever watched. So we want you to watch along with us, fire up your peacock, type in superstars. It's season 11, episode three. It went down January 20th, 1996. That's when it aired. Of course, these were not live. These were pre-taped shows, but season 11, episode three, January 20th, 1996. I'm looking forward to this. Tony, you ready? I'm ready to go. Here we go. Give me a countdown. Three, two, one, play. The World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Who's that guy who does that VO? Do you know? No, it's just a, 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 one of those voice guys you can hire. Superstar in the world today! It's time to retire those retirement rumors. That's called resiliency! That's called heart! When I climb in the ring this Sunday night, hoo I'm coming out Royal Rumble champion. Are y'all getting all this? Just like last year. My prediction is true! They're saying that John Michaels has won the Royal Rumble! The clock is ticking. Are you sure you guys are rolling on this? HBK needs to get this done now. And Michaels better get all the glory he can right now. At WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels will fulfill his lifelong goal. You guys are shooting my uh, good side, right? And that's becoming the World Wrestling Federation champion. Michaels, coming. Boy, this is fucking cheesy as shit. Huh? <laughs> my God. Yeah. He did show off his Rolex Submariner. You know, I'm a watch nerd, so I had to make sure I caught that. 
And here's the open to superstars showing some of their top stars, Brett, Diesel, Razor, John, Ahmed, Hunter. Is that Michael Hayes singing? It, yeah, it might be. Why not, huh? Is this a Doc Hendricks thing? Oh, yeah. We're knee deep in Doc Hendricks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we know that Sean, uh, a week after this, or maybe the day after this, I forget, is uh, going to win the Royal Rumble. He won in 95 and again in 96. How about this for a strange bedfellows tag team? Sid Vicious teaming with Sean Waltman. Man, look at the top of that a little arena. This is uh, not the best time in the world. The oh. company. <laughs> Boy, Jr. He, he was shocked even had, letting those words come out of his mouth. <laughs> How about that? That's before he was stone cold. The ringmaster, the million dollar champion, Steve Austin. Man. Look at Bruce's brother there on the left. Look at the mayor on the right. <laughs> diesel versus fake diesel before it ever happened. So that is uh PJ Walker, just incredible, whatever you want to call him. Aldo Montoya, the Portuguese man of war, but in their first avatar, that is Al snow under hood. Wow. I'll be honest. This, I believe is my first time ever watching an avatar match. Avatar. How about that? I mean, I have an interest. I have a said something very interesting. You've said it before, but you know, you're you're obviously knee deep. You know, you're nose deep in wrestling. I wish I wasn't. But yeah, with Top Guy Weekend. <laughs> yeah. And, oh yeah, that was uh, fun though. Yeah, but I'm saying you are with all the podcasts and yeah. Top Guy Weekend and Starcast and all that. What pulled you away from wrestling and? Once you were pulled away from wrestling, what, what kept your interest back then? Was it football? Yeah. Uh, I was always, um, in this era, you know, I, I guess I stopped watching in 92, like SummerSlam 92 is the last show. I remember the build for, we didn't get the pay-per-view, but I remember we're trying to watch through the squiggly lines, but that was mm -hmm. it. I wound up being in the hospital in January 93 to have my tonsils and adenoids taken out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I watched the first Monday night raw or the one with Hulk Hogan, where he came back. I watched that in the hospital. Uh, okay. when they wanted to keep me overnight back then for some reason. And, uh, that was it. I didn't watch wrestling again until I was flipping through the channels. I just sort of grew out of it. I think a lot of my friends quit watching it and we became more sports obsessed, you know, in middle mm -hmm. school, if you will. Right. And, um, yeah, I think all the focus in that era for me was on basketball and football. You know, the Cowboys and the 49ers were having such a great run and everything that right. was going on with the bills. And meanwhile, in the NBA, you still had, um, Michael Jordan tearing it up. Magic Johnson was around, uh, you know, he was sort of hokey pokey with his HIV circumstance, but there was a, a bit of a transition in basketball because the collectors started to really pay attention to basketball cards with Shaquille O'Neal coming into the league. Right. And I just became a Shaquille O'Neal super fan. So I filled, I was always a big football junkie, but I started watching a, a bunch of basketball in 92, 91 specifically, but by 92, uh, I was knee deep. So it's good time, good time to be a basketball. Oh man. It was so great. And yeah. you know, one of these days, me and Dave green and Cassio kid, we've talked about it forever. I would love to do sort of our format that we do in a lot of our podcasts where we take one topic and go long form on it. I would really love to do that with like nostalgia football and, and basketball, like a nineties mm -hmm. NBA podcast would be mm -hmm. so much fun. Yeah. But you know, where the fuck am I going to find the time for that? Exactly. I was kind of the same way right now. Sid vicious wearing out Aldo. <laughs> Lord <laughs> bless him. him. Out. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, I was kind of the same way because I was such a big fan in the seventies and then, uh, I graduated in 1980 and I started working full time 
And by May of 1980, I was out of wrestling. Then I got married to Lois, started working in baseball. And it wasn't until I started, I got back into wrestling in 83. It was like 80, 81, 82. I didn't watch wrestling at all. I did go to some Thanksgiving shows to the Greensboro Coliseum, uh, but I, I wasn't following it back then at all. I just read a report that America is now in more credit card debt than ever before. More than $1.1 trillion. You know, my grandfather used to say there's no stress like money stress, son. Well, are you feeling that right now? Let me help. You've got a friend in the mortgage business and me, and I've helped families just like yours save hundreds of dollars a month. Seriously. We've helped listeners to this podcast, save up to 800 bucks a month. At SaveWithConrad.com, we routinely help our podcast listeners consolidate all of their high interest rate credit cards into just one much lower monthly payment. Would you like to lower your monthly payments? Wouldn't it be nice to skip your next two house payments? Are you finally ready for some breathing room and peace of mind? Start saving money today with your friend in the mortgage business, me at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. And if we can't help you save some cash, we won't waste your time. You see at savewithconrad.com, we don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. We want to be your mortgage advisor for life. So find out how easy it is to finally get rid of your credit card debt once and for all, get a much lower monthly payment, and even skip your next two house payments. Let's find out how much money you can save for free at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 32416, equal housing lender. Save with Conrad.com. Yeah, there was a time where I was out of it too. You know what's I, weird? I think this was I can't actually see where this was filmed in 1996. How about that? Yeah. Like I'm looking on the, the history of WWE. Yeah. Our buddy right Richard there. Land. And man, it is not on there. Like the next day, I just I just saw that. That was the Royal Rumble. So we're a day before the Rumble here. Listen to this, Sheelan. Oh, but I'll tell you what, what a great victory there. And that's exactly what you want. You want that momentum because the Royal Rumble is here. It's this Sunday night and you want to roll into it. Now, myself, I'm going to be at the Royal Rumble live. But you, you know what you can do in the convenience and comfort of your own home? You can check it out totally live. That's right. So this hard sell in the pay-per-view. I just found it. Man, this is wild. Think about this. What we're watching actually aired on January 20th, but it was filmed in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania at Stabler arena on December 19th, 1995. So it's literally a month and a day old. I mean, this was filmed on December 19th and actually airs a month and a day later. That's wild to me. And yeah, also it it, I, I wanted to look it up where it was, Tony. Cause I was like, why is it so sparsely attended? 1500 fans. It was during a blizzard. Wow. So that explains why I was like, why is the, the upper deck? There's nobody there. Let's listen to gold dust here. And it's in you. Peyton place. 1957. Razor Ramon. Bad boy. Naughty, naughty. Do you know what happens to bad boys like you? They get spanked. <laughs> Well, just the thought of that makes my luscious golden body tremble with excitement. You and me, one on one, I will show you the way and you will remember the name. One of your first times seeing a promo like that from Goldust? Yeah. <laughs> Got to give Dustin some credit. He was all in with the character, wasn't he? Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, this Ahmed promo. Uh, on the night. See, I don't think that you know exactly what it is that you just called. You and that Burger Queen. I tell you what. Bring him to the ring with you. And what you did, you must pay for. Double J, you better pay up. When we come back, we'll talk to... Well, what did you think of that Ahmed screaming promo? I thought he tried to be a road warrior. <laughs> he did. That, that was classic. That was classic Joe Laranada stuff. You know what's funny? 
They paired him with the Road Warriors a year later at WrestleMania. Oh, listen, <laughs> look at this Vader deal. In Boulder, Colorado. I bring you. The Prince of Power. But Big Daddy Cool is tired of all the talk about Vader, and for that matter, Shawn Michaels. Diesel feels he's being overlooked. Royal Rumble right around the corner. You know, a lot of people are saying a lot of things. Shawn Michaels back. Hey, best of luck, buddy. But a lot of people are saying that it's Vader time. Vader's in the Rumble. Vader's going to win the Rumble. You know what? You can set your clocks to it, people, because at the Rumble, it's Diesel time. Yeah, well, it's going to be time for the Royal Rumble, all right? And it's time for 10 to be. Austin out to Million Dollar Man's theme. Shot this week. A double header. Now leading the Million Dollar Champion into the square circle. Take a look at the very impressive. By the way, that buzz cut right there, you can't tell me that's not inspired by Bruce Willis in Pulp Fiction. Looks just like him. Absolutely. Oh, look at this graveyard scene. Doesn't this feel like this is. I mean, on some level, we're watching a time capsule right now. Yeah. I mean, this is wild. Yeah. In, in many ways. Uh, from JR working with Mr. McMahon to. And Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect. So many people not with us. And That's your boy, Scott Taylor, who I think works with y'all now. Yes. That's Scotty. <laughs> yeah. Before he was Scotty too hotty. There he is. As an enhancement talent for yeah. the green trunk and star boot wearing buzz cut ringmaster Steve Austin. Got I got to take a picture. Um, uh, Scotty's a great guy, man, and a great coach. And he came out uh, with uh, the acclaimed. I don't know if it aired on Ring of Honor or just a dark match. And people, people went crazy for him. Did he do the worm? I don't know. I just saw him walk out and then I, yeah, I walked. I didn't. Oh, listen to this promo. Can you imagine you got somebody talking for Steve? You don't only create a winner. You create a monster at the Royal rumble. When I toss everybody over the top rope, I head right into WrestleMania against the world wrestling federation champ. And that's what I do. (laughs) How about it? Yes. I like it on his way to WrestleMania. So he thinks anyhow. Well, the ringmaster certainly has a busy schedule in the next few days. You know, as we said, he'll be at the Royal Rumble in Fresno, California on Sunday. But coming up in Stockton, California, San Jose, White Plains, New York, Baltimore, Maryland, Madison Square Garden, Philadelphia. The ringmaster certainly has a very ambitious schedule within the next week or so. Yes, indeed. Along with, oh, my goodness, along with other WWF superstars, ladies and gentlemen, you haven't seen the World Wrestling Federation ever unless you have seen it live. And there's the. What do you think of the uh, million dollar belt? Uh, because it was involved in one of the greatest angles ever. I like it. I can't help but like it because of being a kid when, when I saw it and loved it. But as an adult, I can say pretty stupid. Okay. Who has it now? They do. Oh, they've got it in their, uh, yeah, our company their traveling has circus. Yeah. Do they still have at WrestleMania there? All their memorabilia on, on display. Still some, not all, but some. Okay. I'm really surprised that they haven't built a hall of fame. I think they will now. You know, there's been rumors for years and years that it was going to happen in, uh, Orlando. Right. But I, I could see right now there being a combined physical location for a hall of fame that has, you know, UFC and WWE. WWE. Look at those empty chairs. Man, I mean, listen, here's the thing too, because I was really down on like, man, how did they have this few people here? But during a blizzard, that makes sense, I suppose. Right. Of course it does. And of course, Bethlehem, I think I mentioned this before, Bethlehem was old school where they used to. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Old stomping grounds. Hey, I'm colorblind. Are his trunks green or brown? 
green. Well, okay. it's green light on. There's a green light on it right now. Yeah. yeah. But I think they were green. Let me go back and. I got to tell you, I, I was never. I know that so many of the people I know just absolutely love Sean's ring gear. Yeah. I think it's fucking stupid. You mean with the hearts? Yeah. I just never liked it. I, I don't have a decision or an opinion one way or the other. Uh, it, uh, his trunks were green. By the, way. the match itself, I mean, his matches and his promos, his work, I was a big fan of, but right. I don't know, man, this gear. I know. I mean, I was talking to a collector this past weekend who was his Holy grail piece. Yeah. I'll tell you what it is. Do you remember the, uh, King Harley race when they made him a King over in the WWF? Yep. They had King, uh, hacksaw, Jim Duggan and King Haku and all that. Well, he's King got the Savage. Cape and the, and the, um, the crown. The cr- wow. And I was like, dude, that's pretty awesome. And I know who happens to have the, um, the boots for Harley race. If you want to just have the whole WrestleMania three, get up. But the idea that Haku wore it and hacksaw wore it, I was like, man, that that's pretty cool that you have that. And you know, he had told, I know WWE was after it and he was, uh, holding out for his Holy grail piece. And I said, well, what is that? And he said, he wanted a full Shawn Michaels entrance, uh, set. So like the boots, the pants, the little yeah. jacket or the hat or whatever. And those are hard to find. I know a guy, I know a few people who have a few, a friend of ours, uh, mine and yours has one, but, uh, Mm. yeah. Uh, By the way, I do like that. They're trying to build up his return. They're talking to the doctors and stuff and showing the, the x-rays and the scans. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Is a realism to it. Yes. Makes it feel like a, an NFL or a boxing or a legitimate athletic competition. Yes. And it goes back to, I've talked about this many times, the hook. Yes. Right. Always the hook. Still is today. His name and the many names that'll be competing at the Royal Rumble in Fresno. (laughs) By now, it has become quite obvious to everyone that the hopes and dreams of a 12 year old boy to become the World Wrestling Federation champion still beat inside the heart of this 30-year-old man. Thanks to the fans of the World Wrestling Federation and myself, I've been given a second chance. But now time is of the essence. And this Sunday night, the road to the World Wrestling Federation Championship goes through Fresno, California, and the Royal Rumble. And once again, the heartbreak kid will outlast 29 of the best superstars in the World Wrestling Federation. And then, <laughs> myself and all my fans got a one-way ticket to WrestleMania and the World Wrestling Federation Championship. The heartbreak kid certainly has. Dude, they are laying it on so thick. This boyhood dream stuff and mm-hmm. all this sugary Shawn Michaels stuff. It's just hard for me to get excited about. Yeah, Ooh. and here's a board meeting. It's, that's a billionaire, Ted. Go out oh. there and buy oh. me some of those uh, uh, new WWF Generation Superstar. And Cecil meets the DDS. <laughs> there is a force that walks among us. The creatures of the night have spoken, and I do intend to deliver a power that is immortal. A fury that has taken men's souls. They can stop the wrath of the Undertaker. Now, a dangerous dark rage burns within. A passion consumed by the quest for WWF gold. The Undertaker. I will fulfill my destiny. Let the hitman heart. You're talking about the excellence of execution. Well, Undertaker, wake up to the real world. The WWF Championship. Welcome to the dark side, live on pay-per-view. A modern-day kamikaze, Hakushi, ready for action now. Oh, Hakushi, my, uh, one of my best buddies, my, one of my best wrestling buddies who went to shows with me and stuff. We've talked about him before. Clint from Hershey. This was his absolute favorite wrestler, really? Hakushi. Hmm. He thought this look and presentation was money. Vince McMahon and the American wrestling audience disagreed. You know, just to show you here, 
I, I, I think nothing, nothing better shows how wrestling has changed, especially for the WWE, than having Royal Rumble in Fresno, California. <laughs> yeah. Not just compared, that. Yeah, compared to where they have it now, right? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, also too, even like I was thinking about the difference of we showed Hakushi in the ring already. Like that would God never is- happen. This is a Barry Horowitz insert. Oh, wait a minute. Barry. Barry Horowitz did a promo in the middle of the Hakushi match. Right. By the way, uh, we should mention this same taping, uh, cause they did a series of tapings here again. This was taped on December 19th. So they recorded the show that would air on the 23rd, four days later, they right. recorded the show that would air on the sixth. They recorded the show that would air on the 13th. And we're watching the last of those tapes. It would come out. It was, um, going to air on the 20th, of course, but the episode a week prior had Jeff Hardy beating razor Ramon by count out. It's a non-title match. Jeff Hardy is the enhancement. Jeff Hardy. He's not yet a superstar. I don't think he's a legal adult at this point. And, uh, I found that interesting because back then razor Ramon saw something in Jeff Hardy and wanted him for every one of these enhancement matches he could get and would refer to him as ice. Cause he said he looked like vanilla ice. I think it's fun. How about a snowy graveyard here? Bret Hart as the sun sets behind my back. And the creatures of the night begin to rise. The sun will soon set on your title reign. What do you think of the way they shot this? Where it does it, it is not high production. I mean, this feels like no. a gorilla shoot, just a camera guy. There's no lighting. I mean, they're just out here in the wind cutting promos. Yeah, again. Never it, happened. It just shows today. you it's it never happened today. It just shows you how far things have and of course there wasn't high definition back then. So no, but this without proper lighting and stuff looks like it's filled on a camcorder. Yes, it does. I'm just, I'm very, I'm, I'm just amazed, not amazed, but fascinated with the, uh, Phantom of the Opera mask. I oh, think. you like that? Yeah. I think it's, it's cool. By the way, uh, you want to guess who we just watched Takushi beat up there? Was that, was that one of the Hardys? That was Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Getting double duty. Everybody wanted him. Speaking of everybody wants him. Here's mm-hmm. Sonny. Along with Zip, yes, they are known as the Body Donnas. And earlier on, JR made reference to, uh, well, the billiard playing, I think, actually, that uh, Sonny was doing back on Raw last week. Take a look at this, if you would. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Sonny using her persuasion as of late to, uh, well, the better herself and the chances of the body done. Well, I think she probably presented a very impressive set of briefs for Monsoon to look over. Probably. Was that in Vince's house? I've heard. I know uh, when, when they shot pool with Mr. Perfect, that was in Vince's house. I don't know if that was, though. I, I only saw one part of Vince's house, which, which was the den or the yeah. family room or whatever, when I walked in. That's the only part I'd been to. Been there, had been there once. So, body obviously, uh, Chris Candido's one. Who's the other one? That's Dr. Tom Pritchard. Dr. Tom Pritchard. I couldn't recognize the ass. There you go. Now, there's Dr. Tom. By the way, their tag team opponent here, which I would not have guessed. Uh huh. This is the headbangers before they were the headbangers. Holy smokes. Yeah. That's Isn't pr- this something? This, this is one of the great reasons to watch this show. Chaz Warrington and Glenn Ruth. So, I mean, we've had, you know, Scotty too hotty, Jeff Hardy, the headbangers. Yeah. Al snow as uh, avatar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is one of the great reasons to watch these old shows. Oh man. This is good I stuff, love it. Brother. You know what? We should do that one day. We should make it our mission to go through a year of WWF TV. From back yeah. in the day, like we did with uh, JCP and right eighty six, right. Hey, the old uh, 
The old WWF stuff back in the eighties was good too. Oh my gosh. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like maybe yeah. watching some superstars from the late eighties. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the show before it was superstars? What, what? Man, what they had a, uh, they had a Tuesday night Titans. They had, um, Oh my God. Wrestling challenge. Yeah. List of WWF syndicate show. Yeah, the, the old shows that were from Bethlehem and from this all American studio. wrestling is probably all what American you're wrestling. About. That's exactly what I'm thinking about. Tuesday Night Titans to me was the most entertaining thing I'd seen when when I started working there in 1989. Because I remember seeing one of them, thinking, I I I made it my point to watch as many as I could. In my free time, I would just go back in the tape library, find one, pop it in. If you had access to their full library, everything mm -hmm. they have, yeah. what would you want to see most of all? I would want to see Tuesday Night Titan. You know, that's on the network. Really? Yeah. Okay. We, I say for a bonus episode next month, we should watch one together. Yeah, I think we should. We'd have to. Oh, yeah. I guess there's going to be a lot of talking. Yeah, well, that's fine. We can, yeah. you know. But there's some of the skits like. Uh, Like the Iron Sheik calling his camel Claude. But Vince had told him that the camel's name is Clyde, you know, like. Yes. Yes. And he said, so cheeky, what's your camel's name? He went, Claude. <laughs> so great. It's so great. Huh. And the best ones, it's not a knock on Gene Okerlund, but the best ones was when Vince was the host. Look at that. And look at that. Man, isn't it crazy to think, you know, that's a young Mike Kyoto right there too. Still rocking a little bit of a mullet there. He's still got a little bit going. He liked to party. You know, uh, in today's, uh, action, they probably would have had Sonny dress a little bit more provocatively than she does right now. Yeah. Meanwhile, here's gold, uh, smuggling plums. All right, guys, let's run a timeout right now. And I want to give you the heads up that, you know, football season might be over, but the action on the floor is just now heating up. We got tournament season and the fight for playoff home court. Man, there's just no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. And we want you to get in on the excitement with our friends at Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Well, you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. And right now you can win up to 100 extra money on prizepicks.com with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand dollars with NBA, NHL and college basketball entries all today on price picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Do you want to play alongside some of price picks, favorite players? How about Meek mill and sugar, Sean O'Malley? All you got to do is check on the, the community plays under the promos tab, and you'll see some of the biggest names in the game playing alongside you. The conference tournaments are here. Prize picks has got you hooked up. And by the way, this isn't just for men's basketball. They can hook you up for your women's college basketball as well. And by the way, let me break down. If you haven't already followed me, here's what I'm talking about. All you're doing is picking a couple of different players and stat projections. For example, you could say, I think Kevin Durant is going to get more than 28 points. And I think LeBron James will have more than seven assists. It's that easy. Boom. You're in, you're done. And you don't just have that for the guys. You got that for the ladies. You got it for the pros. You got it for college. Dude, let's have some fun. And did I mention injury insurance? Price Picks has it to where your injury, your entries stay live, even if one of your players gets injured. Let me give you an example. Let's say they're playing a basketball game and there's a player who goes out in the first half with an injury. Well, don't worry. It's not going to count against you. The rest of your entries stay live. I don't know of anybody else who does that. That's why I am making sure that I'm picking stuff like Anthony Davis for more than two blocks and Steph Curry for more than 29 points and LeBron James for more than seven assists. You get the idea. It's that simple. You pick the player, you pick the stat projection and you watch it roll in. We want you to download the app today. Use our code WHW. You'll get a first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. I'm talking about prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. 
They're the number one daily, daily fantasy sports app. And you're going to see why when you download the price picks app today and use our code WHW, you'll get a first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. Download the price picks app. Use our code WHW. You'll be glad you did price picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Let's go. Up. Let's take a lot of hearts. Get some, you better get some help. Oh no, Rangers lost it. Oh no, Ranger right off. It's gone completely but sir. How about Dustin selling, waving his hands as he's getting thrown? It was amazing. I don't think anybody could have pulled off gold dust as good as Dustin Rhodes. I, I agree. I agree. My God, what a great performance. I know that at the time it was a controversial character, but goodness gracious, when you talk about just going all in on a character, he did it. Yeah. You can't you can't argue his commitment to the shit. Tony Chimmel trying to get involved in that. I th- that looks like backstage at MSG. And I say that because of the blue. Maybe not. I don't know where they had Raw last Monday. Well, you I know what? I'll probably, look it up for you, Rafa. That they, they probably didn't have it. At, no, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have gone outside like that at MSG. I don't think it would the, be that easy to get outside at MSG. No, it wouldn't. I mean, the the arena floor is like on the third floor. I think. Well, well I don't know. I'm looking. I just that blue and that white in the back. Oh, I didn't think- really see uh, the mayor, I believe. Oh, look at there. Holy smokes. That's a big fella. Are you surprised we never saw him in WCW? I am. Yeah. It was like everybody, I mean, almost every did both. Not here, though. Didn't have to count your calories when you were him, did you? <sighs> no. Nor do your points on your phone for Weight Watchers. Who's this, Tojo Yamamoto with him? Phil Apollo is his opponent. He would have been one of the other guys who I think would occasionally do um, doink duties. Oh, okay. Now, of course, the two best doinks, uh, everybody knows Matt Bourne. And Bruce Pritchard would say Steve Kern was the only other doink who was worth the shit. He was not a fan of uh, Mr. Apollo or Mr. Brooklyn Brawler, Steve Lombardi, as doink. How did Yogazuna not have a heart attack? In- Man, I mean, you want to talk about another guy gone way too long or way too soon. And you think about how many folks are in that Samoan dynasty. I mean, I know it's like a, it's a gimmick now in WWE, but all that talent and that one family tree that had so much success in the same industry, pretty crazy. Oh, speaking of crazy, how about Jim Cornette and the WWF? Oh, and God. the king of hearts went harder in the Royal Rumble. And one of them, I promise you, is going to win it. <laughs> Jim, what if it just comes down to me and Yoko Zuna? Whose side are you going to be on? Well, of course I would. Better, that you better be on my side because I am going to win the Royal Rumble. What a- Less is more. You know, sometimes with those little cutaway interviews, I like that. Just in and out. I do too. Yeah. I do too. I don't think I don't. I don't think we do enough of them in uh, AEW. I've said that we don't have to have, Probably. to your point, a three or five minute thing. You know, no. you can hit three sentences, and that tells us what we need to hear. Right. Especially when you got guys who can't do a two or three minute interview. Yeah. We haven't. This got to be scary if you're on the, if you're waiting for this to happen. to you. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, cause here's the thing he had, he clearly had two versions that he would give one where he was taking care of you and one where maybe not so much. Right. You miss the hotline. I mean, isn't that just, a, it's fun to think about. It's times from a bygone era. Like there's signs in the crowd here, but not as many as there would be later, but nobody's playing on their phone because at best people have bag phones. 
Right. You know, they got a phone in their car. Right. Right. But you know, it's just crazy to think like, I, I can't imagine a wrestling hotline working in 2024. Like that'd be the str- strangest thing ever. I'd like to go. Can we, can we, uh, track a little bit? This. Yeah. Track this. Number. Nobody does pay-per-view like us seven Eastern four Pacific, the Royal rumble, almost three hours of unpredictable, exciting action. The Royal rumble match itself. 60 minutes of the most unique, exciting action the World Wrestling Federation can present. Let's talk about some of the participants. Big Daddy Cool Diesel, the one, two, three kid, Tatanka, Dory Funk Jr. I mentioned Yoko Zuna, Doug Gilbert, Jake the Snake Robert, Jerry Lawler, and this guy who we have not seen in action on TV recently, the undefeated Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Why have I refused to wrestle on television? Simple. And 29 other World Wrestling Federation superstars will find out at the Royal Rumble when I enter in my top physical form. To win the Royal Rumble and go on to WrestleMania where I become the next World Wrestling Federation champion. Can you imagine if you had a time machine and you could go back and you could just tell that guy who just cut that promo, hey man. You ain't going to believe this shit. You're running things, dude. I mean, the idea that he's the big boss and one day there will be a day where you're the chief creative officer and Vince McMahon won't even be welcome. What? There's a night and, uh, who, you know, the bell tolls and, uh, the edge of darkness and dead man's curve. And it doesn't make any difference to me because it doesn't matter. I'm not afraid. I got to know, I want to know who is better. I'm not afraid to find out the truth, but the fact is, Undertaker, you've never, ever been tested like I'm going to test you. You're talking about the excellence of execution. You're talking about technical wrestling. You're talking about endurance. You may be the dead man, but when you step in the ring with me, I'm going to bring you to life. and We're going to find out who is the best. Oh, wow. What a title match. Every title's on the line this Sunday night at the Royal. And that Bret Hart promo was pretty good. Uh, they're hyping this pay-per-view hard. Of course, this is the, uh, go home episode. This aired the Saturday before. So the day before, mm-hmm. and there is Isaac Yankum DDS. This is his first crack in the big time. He was, uh, discovered, I guess you might call it by, uh, or recommended rather by Jim Cornette. And of course, Jerry Lawler was a big fan, right? So he gets the opportunity here and he's going to be taking on diesel. Little did he know, Hey man, this time next year, you're going to be cosplaying as this character. But at that point, he probably would have taken anything. Who wants to be a wrestling dentist? Unless you're Britt Baker. That's different. There's diesel. Just as cool as Kevin Nash can be. I don't like those, uh, old t-shirts though, where it's got like the dude's face on it. Right. Diesel gloves are a cool thing to sell though. Yeah. I, I, I think it's interesting that, uh, Michael Hayes did their quote unquote control centers back. then. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Dean Oakland did ours. No knock on Michael Hayes, but Gene Oakland is much better. But Michael was selling his ass off. Got to give him credit. How about uh, Jerry Lawler with a mullet? That hair just flowing out behind the crown. These are two big boys here, Diesel and yeah. uh, Isaac Yankum. Yeah, the mayor looks good, man, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he he's going to get even more massive right. during the rest of his career. He's going to add a lot more. Uh, mass and muscle and weight. It's crazy to think though. I mean, what a great story of perseverance. Both of these guys are, sure. you know, to be clear, you got one guy who was a master blaster. That didn't work. Benny Vegas. Then he was Oz. Oz. That didn't work. Then he's Vinny Vegas and that doesn't work. So then he comes over and he's like the silent bodyguard 
He's just a heavy. He's a number two, not really doing anything. And then he becomes a tag partner and then an IC guy. And then all of a sudden you blink and ta-da, he's the world champ. And this presentation of diesel made him a star. And granted it happened in a, in a down period. So even though he may be the top guy, he's not making what he perceived to be top guy money, but boy, he right. persevered and he, and he wrestled as himself as Kevin Nash and ta-da in the NWO, my man became a multimillionaire and it's a similar trajectory. Really? When you think about it for Glenn Jacobs, I mean, he toils around on the independence and, and is trying to make a name for himself as Unibomb. And is working Smoky Mountain and Memphis and wherever he can get opportunities and down in Puerto Rico and then winds up here with an opportunity to finally wrestle for a big company, but as an evil dentist. Well, here it goes it goes back to this, Conrad. I know I'm right on this. And and I heard somebody tell say this years and years ago. And I believed it and I believe it to this day. If you compare WCW to the WWF. They knew how to make star. Yeah. They did. We did not. WCW back then. I mean, think about the, the guys that that we brought in were established stars. And I know Kevin Nash and, and Scott Hall became even bigger. Yeah. But still they were established stars and they 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 were cool. They became not the diamond stud and not Vinny Vegas. They became razor and diesel, the cool guys. And they, we brought them over here. We would have called them razor and diesel. Had we been able to, right? So we just used their real names and thus they became big stars, but WWE was always the star man. They knew how to make stars. They made Hulk Hogan. They made Mr. Perfect. I mean, just, just think of the name. Hell, they made CM Punk. Yeah. They made, uh, Brian Danielson. Now I think we've done a great job with some guys. I think we've done a tremendous job with the acclaim. Oh, there's make no it, doubt. And Darby Allen, MJF, Darby Allen, MJF. We, we've been able to make stars, but I'm comparing WWF yes. to WCW, not AEW. Yeah. WCW had DDP. Mm-hmm. Goldberg. Right. That's okay. Anybody else? On a major scale. Ray Mysterio, w maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. Dean Malenko. I mean, and listen, yeah. I, I don't know. And I mean this, I don't know if there wouldn't have been proof of concept that Chris Jericho and Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero would have gotten a WWF opportunity. Right. Cause I don't remember them having job offers before WCW. Right. But once they proved what they can do with WCW, the WWF clearly saw something in them and pushed them to another level. But would they have even considered it without seeing what they could do on the other channel? And I think that's an important thing too. Like Cody Rhodes never intended to wrestle anywhere other than WWE. He didn't go work a shit ton of independence. He worked his dad's turnbuckle championship wrestling shows as a kid, as a referee, and then decided he wanted to get into acting and then wound up going through WWE developmental and had success, but clearly they just saw him at a certain level. They being Vince and it took him going away. And as JR would say, learning a new hold in order to change his perception. And I think drew McIntyre is another example of that, you know, like he had been with that company for a long time and lots of starts and stops. And he goes out, reinvents himself, becomes the impact champ has a lot of success over in the UK. And now he's back and won a rumble and may have ended a mania and won a title. And yeah. no, I think I'm talking more about when I'm talking about star makers, I'm talking about Anything WCW, NWA, before the advent of Nitro. I think Nitro helped make stars. The Monday Night Wars helped make stars. But if you try to compare pre-Nitro to WWE, nothing. Right. Nothing, man. The star makers were on the 
on the WWE side. Sting, maybe. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, Ric Flair, maybe. Uh, I wouldn't count him as a WCW star. I'd count him as an NWA star. NWA star, yeah. I mean, he was he was a made man before Ted Turner was in the deal, but Ted Turner's watch did help make Vader a star, make Sting a star, maybe the Steiner brothers. Sure. Man, what a different time here. We've only got a few minutes left here before they go off the air. You guys, you imagine it's going to be another hard sell, and it feels like they're trying to really highlight. Oh, yeah, my gosh, it's billionaire Ted. Okay. I bought myself World Series. I bought myself a library of classic movies. Heck, I even colorized a few of them. But why can't I buy the WWF? We've been trying, Ted. How come their wrestling is still better than ours? They've got better athletes. All we've got are their disloyal, greedy has-beens from the 80s. Who you calling a has-been, bro? Can't blame a guy for trying to con a... Make a buck. Who you calling disloyal? Sight, I started in the 70s, not the 80s. Well, then go out there and buy me some of those, uh, those WWF generation superstars. The new WWF generation. It's not for sale. Uh, Huckster, <laughs> uh, what if we called you the, the, the boy toy? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I like it. What'd you think? I mean, that was a little Vince Russo cameo in there. I saw that. Yeah. That popped me. When I saw that. Have you seen a billionaire Ted skit before? Is that your first no, one? First time I've seen. Wow. Well. I'd heard about it that they have a character named billionaire Ted, but I'd never, that was the first time I'd seen it. Well, they're doing a lot of Royal rumble. Look at double J Jeff Jarrett, man. They're selling hard for this pay-per-view the next day and Lord oh, bless them. You assume it's still doc Hendricks doing the VO. Over the top no, rope, we're talking Vince. the WWF Royal Rumble. I was telling people this weekend, I really do believe Royal Rumble, the actual match, is my most anticipated match of the year because it's the only one you know. It's, you know, you know what it is every time. You don't have to be caught up in storylines or any of that. Like, right. right. What, what will be the big matches next year? Well, we don't know, but we know there's a Royal Rumble in 2025. Sure. Uh, and I think that's cool when you can make the match, the draw rather than the guys in it, rather than the Absolutely. stories in it. And Absolutely. I don't know that they've really done that as much. I know some people would argue maybe the elimination chamber, but I would say it doesn't compare as far right. as anticipation and, and all that. And maybe you could say hell in a cell, but again, I don't think that is comparable. And, and maybe you could argue the, the ladder match, but. Those are that, that, I mean, the elimination chamber, the hell in a cell, and certainly the ladder match. Those are so risky. Like the money in the bank match. Those are so yeah. risky compared to a Royal rumble. Yeah. Right. How about this ending their show with a promo? Yeah. I mean, now you end it with action, man. Yes. And we're excited to announce a new affiliate partnership with fanatic fanatics. Easy for me to say. The world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear. It's an easy way to support your favorite podcasts, shop for your favorite players and teams by going to shopsportsmerch.com. That's shopsportsmerch.com. Or if you're watching along with us on YouTube, just hit that QR code that's up on your screen right now, or just check out the uh, description below for the link. We'll also have it up on all of our socials. You can shop with confidence for your favorite jerseys, caps, shirts, jackets, hoodies, and more with fanatics, but be sure to use our special link shopsportsmerch.com, And that will support our show. Well, we, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed a little action here today. We had two really fun bonus episodes. We watched uh, St. Valentine's day massacre, the debut of the big show back when they were still just calling him Paul white, Vince McMahon versus stone cold, Steve Austin from February of 1999. And then a January go home edition Royal rumble special for superstars in 1996, man, I, I enjoyed both, but on some level, as much as the high watermark for the WWF was, was that attitude era. I think I enjoyed watching the 1996 show more. Yeah, man. I, it, I, I enjoyed watching guys before they were stars. Yes. I enjoyed watching the old school doc Hendricks stuff and 
the small little promos and uh, yeah, good stuff, brother. Thank you very much, Patrick. Suggestion. Great suggestion. And we greatly appreciate all the support that you offer uh, our show. It's been such a big deal. We just celebrated uh, seven years. I can't believe that, but we started this way back in 2017, uh, back before I or your daughter were married. And now look at us, look at us, would you seven years deep? And I don't have that itch, Tony. I'm not itching to get rid of you. So I appreciate you making the time to, uh, do a couple bonus episodes today. A lot of fun. These are a lot of fun. They really are. And thank you everybody for being with us and for being with us on Patreon and top guy ad free shows as well. And, uh, we'll see you sooner rather than later with a couple more bonus episodes right here on what happened when?